Hi everyone, welcome. Mary Jo Feely with Fourth Dimension Healing. Today I want to take a little bit of time and talk with you about crystal grids. Crystal grids is a healing method that incorporates the healing properties of crystals and gemstones as well as the energy frequencies that uh, we work with when we work with sacred geometry. Now sacred geometry simply is a term that is used to reference the sorts of patterns that we find recurring in nature. For example, if you think about the, the spiraling of a snail shell, that's that same spiral that we see as a fern unfurls in the spring. And when we look at pictures of galaxies, it's that same spiral that we see. So that's an example of a recurring pattern that it's found in nature. And we can work with those frequencies and energies of that actual structure, that actual pattern, along with the gemstones and crystals to be able to empower healing. Another example of um, sacred geometry would be if you were to take a piece of fruit, slice it sideways, then open it up and gaze upon that center. What does that look like? It may look like a star, it may look like a pentagram or a pentagon. You are going to start seeing some of these naturally occurring patterns as you begin to become more familiar with them. So with crystal grids, which can be very basic or highly complex, what we're doing is taking a look at those properties of the um, sacred geometry along with the properties of the gemstones and crystals, bringing them together, setting an intention and offering healing, again, for ourselves, for a particular need that may be arising for us, and then also offering that out to the greater, greater community. So here are some examples of some uh, templates that I offer in my online shop as part of um, some collections of grid crystals that I already have prepared. Here is that spiral. So that spiral shape, the spiral sacred geometry pattern, is that has this vortex type of energy. It's this uh, energy of growth. It's an energy of uh, re-energizing. So you can see that this would perhaps have a place in healing if those were the sorts of healing processes that you were calling forth. Here's an example of a pentagram. Now this pentagram is, uh, this is what we can see inside an apple seed, or the core of an apple rather. Uh, we have in the pentagram a structure that promotes abundance, it's, it promotes attraction. There's a lot of action and energy going on in this particular pattern geometrically. And so when we blend the pattern with specific gemstones and crystals, we can really activate a lot of healing. Here's an example of a square grid, very solid, very grounding, very protecting. So depending on which stones we may choose to use to work with this particular grid, we can have a lot of stabilizing, protective, uh, grounding, balancing sorts of energies coming from this grid. Here is an example of an infinity grid. An infinity structure, this pattern is uh, really never ending. It's about wholeness. One feeds into the next, feeds into the next. So there's a completion to this. There is an onward movement that is used with this particular frequency. And so if we are setting an intention for healing that we want to continue for quite some time in a very, very much flowing way, we may want to consider using an infinity grid. Now we're actually gonna build a grid. And we are gonna build a grid with this hexagon. Now there are actually three different patterns that stand out here. You've got two triangles, one with the base that's parallel uh, near the table with the point pointing up. And then we have another, pen, uh, another um, pyramid pointing down with the base running across the top and the point at the bottom. We have a circle in this grid, 
A circle is a complete, inclusive kind of form. So this hexagon grid is very, uh, very helpful for healing, general healing, for clearing, for empowering. Now each of these little shapes, some uh, appear a little different are simply guides that are included in these templates that can help uh, help us determine which stones we may want to place. So this is the grid we're going to build. So I will just move these other templates aside. Now when we are building a grid we can choose to use as many or as few stones as we want. And one of the things that's important to remember is that this grid exists whether or not we're even using a template. But I find it really helpful, especially when we're first learning how to create grids, to have a template. So we're going to start by laying this flat. And uh, in my online shop, I have already bundled stones together, which can be really helpful. Uh, of course, you can mix and match however you so choose. And for this particular stone grid, I've picked a piece of pyrite. Pyrite is a nice grounding stone. It's an earth stone. For me, it anchors what this grid is about because that center stone is a stone that is going to help anchor the intention. And I'm going to place that right there. And again, we don't have to have a center stone. Not all grids do. If you are creating a grid, you're going to start from the center and you're going to build out. Now I would like to suggest that this particular grid that we're building is a grid for general healing. It's an opportunity for us to be able to let this grid continue to offer healing to all beings. And so for that particular healing intention, I'm going to be using stones that are very supportive of overall healing. I'm using three green adventurines. Adventurine is a lovely stone that supports overall healing. And I've just created a triangle around the pyrite. So we've got that base strength grounding of that pyrite. Now we're moving out into a more broad healing energy. I am now going to add three rose quartz. Rose quartz is a stone of soothing compassion and comfort. It's very helpful for emotional healing. I'm placing these three so I have another triangle that I formed with the rose quartz and together, they already have created those two triangles, just like we have in the larger hexagon grid. So the pyrite is an earth element stone, so it's going to be really helping with the physical, uh, physical reality, whether it's physical health, whether it is the environment, whether it is finances, whether it is home and security those sorts of qualities come in uh, into play with earth element stones. The green adventuring that we placed is also an earth element stone. So we've got the general healing going into that earth element of physical um, healing and basically the healing that we're doing um, in this current life with this earth and business and finance and security. The three rose quartz that we laid down that's a water element stone. That's a stone of emotion. So now you can see that while we've got that stability in the center and we've got the green adventuring growing out into that physical, physical body, that physical realm, we're also bringing now some water element stones into play so that we can support the emotional body and the emotions that are occurring within us and within the world.
The next thing I'd like to add is going to be common citrine. Now, this common citrine that I have for this particular grid has a termination, which means it has a point. Depending on where that energy is flowing is going to be dependent upon which direction I have that point. What I'm choosing to do right now is to have these points pointing outward. So I'm going to be placing one common citrine point outward. I'm going to take another same thing. Can you see that I have now three common citrine points that I have laid out? Again, they're creating another triangle. And by pointing those away, we are drawing this empowering, strong, grounding energy of the pyrite along with the frequencies and energy and healing properties of the green adventuring and the uh, rose quartz. Now that's being drawn out even more fully out into our environment. Citrine is a fire element stone. It's about creativity. It is about burning off what isn't needed anymore. It is about empowerment. And so while this whole intention of um, this healing grid is about cleansing and about healing, there's that empowerment piece that we can strengthen by using a stone that is aligned with the fire element. There are three areas left on this grid to complete. And I'm choosing for this particular grid to use amethyst. And you, you'll notice that these are not particularly large stones, and that's fine. Amethyst is a, a stone that is way up high in the head. It is about clearing. It's about that spiritual connection. And so by having these stones here, we are now bringing, again, from the center, physical, emotional, that mental fiery aspect of hard thinking and clearing and burning off, and then bringing in that higher frequency in that mind. So we really have the full body represented here on this grid. Now, one of the other things that we can do with this grid, it's fine the way it is, and we can also add in clear quartz points. Now, quartz sometimes grows as a point, most of the time it does, and it might have a single point, which simply means that it grew out of the earth in one direction. Uh, sometimes it's a double terminated point, and we can choose to use a clear quartz point to even more strongly empower this grid because quartz is a storm element stone and it is about really transforming and, um, and enhancing the energies of all the other stones around it. For this particular grid, I'm going to choose to work these quartz so that they're going around pointing to the next. So we've got this wonderful circular energy. That is now moving and creating its own empowering circle. So this is how we've laid the grid out. Now we get to the point where we are going to choose to activate it. And activating the grid can be done in a couple different ways. You don't necessarily have to have a crystal to activate it. It can be done with intention. It can be done by touching each stone with the intention that you are connecting all of those stones together because by activating the grid what we're doing is we are connecting those frequencies together and assisting all of those energies to now in a sense create a community of this grid frequency. 
One way that we can activate is to use some kind of a crystal. This is a clear quartz point. We could perhaps use a piece of selenite. We could perhaps use a very tiny little crystal. Or as I mentioned, we don't need to have any crystal at all. But I'm going to use this point, this clear quartz point. And how I'm going to now activate this grid is I'm going to start in the center and for, for just one moment, I'm going to reinforce my intention for this grid. Uh, and we've already stated it is for general healing, it is for empowerment, and it is for this, this sense of um, clean, cleansing for not only us, but for the entire world. So I'm going to start by taking my quartz, touching it to the center stone, and then moving it out to the green adventuring. I like to go back and touch the center stone again. Now I'm going out to the next adventuring, back to the center. Now I'm going to the third adventuring, back to the center. I'm going to repeat the same process with the rose quartz. Back to the center always. Now I'm going to go out to that citrine. Now I'm going to activate and integrate all those frequencies that I've already touched into by connecting them energetically through the quartz and through that center stone. Now I'm bringing that out to the amethyst. And of course, finally, because I did lay the clear quartz crystal points going around, I'm going to start again at the center. And I'm going in the direction that the termination points are directing the energy. I like to leave my activation wand near my grid. This grid will continue to work. Now there are a couple ways that we can reinforce this grid. One way is to perhaps this is in a location that I can come back to every day and reactivate it. Perhaps it's in a location that's not easy for me to do that every day. I can take a photo of it, perhaps with my phone, and then using my fingers reactivate it. I can take a mental picture of it and then sit in a quiet meditation for a couple of minutes as I bring that intention of the grid, I bring the energies of each of those stones, and I bring it back very mindfully, setting the intention that this continue to be activated. Now, grids can be left for a very long time, or you may find that you wanna shift them around from time to time. If these stones get disrupted, it's best to then, once again, simply reactivate the grid. I like to keep my grids out of um, the way of any little fingers that might get involved with them, any animals, especially cats that like to jump up all over the place. You may want to think about where you might be able to place a grid where it's not gonna be disrupted on a regular basis. Uh, but this is an example how you can work with, here is an example of a number of different gemstones that represent the different elements because those elements are all within us. And when we bring them all together, they really are able to help us balance and heal in a very effective way. Now this is an example of um, a full-size grid that I offer in my online shop. Of course, sometimes space is limited. And so I have what I call mini grids as well. The same five geometric patterns are available as the templates. And um, the grid also has some of the very same stones. It has um, the amethyst, it has green adventuring, it has little mini quartz, 
has a selenite wand as an activation wand, and it doesn't have the citrine, but that's okay. It may be that you have a number of stones already and you are ready to uh, move forward with creating your own grids. That's fabulous. So keep in mind, crystal grids, very basic, extremely complicated. Bottom line, they are bringing together the healing properties of crystals and gemstones along with the powerful frequencies that are found in the recurring patterns in nature that we refer to as sacred geometry bringing them together to be able to really set a healing intention around our own physical work that we're doing, around global work that is happening. Uh, I would also like to offer that if you have studied any kind of energy healing, if you are perhaps one of my Reiki students, then I would definitely ask you to think about perhaps you'd like to even send Reiki into this grid as well because these are ways that we can continually be sending out those healing frequencies uh, out into our lives and into the lives of all beings. If you have any questions, you can always email me. You can send me a chat through my uh, web page. Uh, take a look at the link below. You can take a look at my online shop and explore some of the different grid sets that I have available along with many individual stones if you'd like to build your own grid. Uh, also, if you'd like to know when I have another video available, go ahead and subscribe and you can like me, forward this on to anybody that you think would be uh, benefit from it. That's wonderful for you to do. So again, uh, enjoy bringing together the healing properties of gemstones and crystals along with the powerful frequencies that we find in nature that we know of as sacred geometry, offering to yourself and to the world deep healing. Be well.